Let us pray. Holy God, we, we look to your word because we trust that in you we can always be made new. In Jesus' name. One of the hardest parts of planning a wedding, or really any party, but one of the hardest parts of planning a wedding is coming up with the invitation list. In the case of weddings, focusing on weddings, and I'm guessing many of you have experienced this, I know I have. Negotiations between the betrothed couple and the parents can actually get pretty testy. Parents of the couple and the couple, they very often disagree on who should be invited. You know, do we really need to invite Aunt Irma and, and, and Cousin Fester to the, to the wedding? Now, we all know, we all know that there need to be limits on the number of people. There, there needs to be a limit on the number of guests. But once the list is set, that's when the challenge is. That's when the battle starts to see who makes the cut. I imagine that God would be a lousy wedding planner. I imagine that God would have a lot of trouble working within a, 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 a wedding budget because God seems to have a very difficult saying, very difficult time saying, you're not invited to my party. When God throws a party, the, there's just this, there seems to be nothing that any of us can do to be uninvited. Of course, we need to decide whether we accept the invitation, but God, everybody at his party. The way I imagine it, God would be a lousy bouncer. God's not very good at drawing hard lines in the sand. Case in point, God's relationship with the Israelites, the chosen people. If you look back to the relationship with Abraham, God made covenants all the way back to the beginning of the Bible with the Israelites saying to them, you will be my people and I will be your God. But throughout the Old Testament, the Israelites, they break covenant time and again, especially by worshiping other gods. God's created, created to suit their own needs or gods like the Baals who Pastor Moira spoke about these, these gods, lowercase g, of their neighbors. They adopted and borrowed many of them and other ways, too, of breaking covenant, mistreating each other and not following the laws appropriately in many other ways as well. And so throughout the, the Old Testament, you have this kind of a dance where the covenants are made and then they're broken but they're always, they're always renewed. God warns them, well, that's it. And you see this a lot in the Old Testament. That's it. You finally, you've gone and done it. And yet, before you know it, God is reaching out for the hand of his people. There's, of course, there is judgment. We see it time and again. And there is punishment, too. But it never ends there. God just seems too soft-hearted to draw the kind of, of rigid lines that we human beings, that we actually very often draw. God's love always seems to supersede God's judgment. Yes, God, I think we can say God would be a really inefficient party planner and a lousy bouncer. And thanks be to God for that. Case in point, our first reading from the prophet Hosea, speaking to the people of the northern kingdom of Israel in a 
time of deep worry and, and, and dysfunction and also fear. They were under threat of their neighbors. And in the verses before our verse, beautiful verses today, the verses that lead up to it, you get a sense of the unfaithfulness of the people to the Lord. The prophet says, before our reading, says things like, I will punish her, speaking of northern kingdom, I will punish her for her festival days of the Baals. When she offered incense to them and forgot me, says the Lord. But then it's almost like switching on a dime, presto, changeo, therefore, the Hosea is saying, starting out, therefore, I will allure her, speak and speak tenderly to her, and give her vineyards. And then Isaiah, just getting warmed up, ratchets the, the, the beauty and the, the love even further, saying, you will call me your husband. I will make a special covenant with you, abolishing war. I will have you lie down in safety. So we have to ask, the switching on a dime, where did that forgiveness suddenly come from? The answer, it came from God's heart. God's incredibly forgiving heart. At moments in life, and I think we all experience them, I know I, Moments when we're tempted to write someone off. To think, you know, they've gone too far this time. I'm done with them. That's it. In those kinds of moments, when we're tempted to think that way, in those moments, it's good to pause and think about God's perspective because God thinks differently than that. But wait a minute, we might think, I don't want those people at my party. They watch the wrong political shows. Or they, oh man, they're rooting for the wrong team in the Super Bowl. That's a sensitive one, I know. Better be careful there. But in contrast, we see God's soft-heartedness never more evident than in Jesus Christ. We see a God who's so soft-hearted as to put his own son, Jesus Christ, up on a cross for our forgiveness. The same Jesus who shows up in our reading in Mark with this gigantic heart and he gets into trouble for it. The religious leaders in that reading, they complain. Why? Why did Jesus invite this guy, Levi? Why did he invite Levi into his inner circle? Everybody hates this guy. Everyone hates the tax collectors. He's working for either Rome, or in this case, he's working for, the, for King Herod. But even worse than that, he then goes to Levi's house for a meal with not only other tax collectors, but other sinners. We are not allowed. These guys are thinking we are not. The Pharisees are thinking we're not allowed to eat with people like that. People who, people who don't follow our laws as closely as we do. And one more thing. Why, why don't Jesus and his followers, why don't they fast? Why don't they fast as often as we do? Why? What they're really asking is, why aren't they more like us? The problem that these Pharisees display is a very common human problem. We underestimate the size of God's heart. And we actually, I think, try to put limits on who God loves. But wait a minute again. I've heard whispers that they believe this or they do that. Jesus, do you really want to be eating with them? They make me uncomfortable. 
I'll bet that guy doesn't even go to church. I'll bet that other guy has lunch. In fact, I think I saw him the other day in town having lunch with a tax collector. Well, according to Jesus today, God's heart is way too large to draw those kinds of lines. Now, at the same time, we might be tempted to think, I'm actually doing a pretty good job of managing my own life. I don't think God would be really that frustrated with me. It's, it's really those who are messing up big time. Those are the people. Those are the people who need God. The problem with that kind of thinking is that we miss the party. And that's too bad because it sounds like a really good party. It sounds like Jesus is having a good time. It sounds like an incredible party full of people who know, who know that they sin and yet who also know that God loves them anyway and, and who believe that God wants to help them to grow as people and to grow their hearts too. Now, now, of course, it's not easy to describe the size of God's heart. As a default, I've done it here. I often use the word incredible. Years ago, up in Brooklyn, my good friend Doris Kane, after a sermon, she came up to me and she said, nice sermon. But don't ever use the word incredible the way you used it today again. You used it wrong. Doris was a linguist. And she was pointing out something that actually had not really, when I think about it, literally not occurred to me. Incredible means impossible to believe. Beyond belief. Well, friends... The size of God's heart is so big, it's so gigantic, that it is beyond belief. It is beyond our understanding. But it is precisely because of the size of God's heart. That's the reason why not only is God a lousy bouncer, but also God throws incredible parties impossibly good parties, eternally good parties. And our job is to accept the invitation. Because when we do that, our hearts 